सो वेन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट प्लास्टिक वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट आई एड ऑफकोर्स गो फॉर रिसाइकलिंग लेकिन सी ऑन योर फिगर प्लास्टिक वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट इज क्लासिफाइड इन टू टू ब्रॉडर कैटेगरीज वेन आई एम लुकिंग एट रिसाइकलिंग दैट इज मैकेनिकल रिप्रोसेसिंग और मैकेनिकल रिसाइकलिंग एंड सेकेंड इज थर्मो केमिकल रिसाइकलिंग सो टू टर्मिनोलॉजीज आर कमिंग टूगेदर थर्मो means thermal or uh, we are talking about heat and then the second part is chemical which has to do with the feedstock so we'll look at them one by one so mechanical reprocessing the first one is that of primary recycling where i can convert my product from source segregated waste into the same primary product so i have isolated or segregated waste secondary we have mixed plastic waste and then we try and make a secondary product say for example the material was used for some primary application let's say a milk jar or maybe a jerry can or something like that and then going forward i am trying to make a flower pot out of it or maybe if i have some fibrous material i am trying to make a carpet out of it right the third one is feedstock recycling or pyrolysis which is classified as tertiary recycling where uh, we generally target uh, the feedstock recovery the last thing which is thermal recycling or incineration is energy recovery or heat energy is recovered which is also mentioned as quaternary recycling so primary and secondary are put together as mechanical recycling because the thought process is very similar so mechanical recycling refers to operations that aim to recover plastic waste via the mechanical process like grinding washing separating drying regranulating and compounding so these are the processes that are generally used as in they are very mechanical in nature and they thus produce recyclate that can be converted into same or new plastic products often substituting virgin plastics so examples of mechanical recycling of post consumer plastic waste may include collection and grinding of sorted clean pp crates and blending the regrind with virgin polymer to mold new crates so the next is uh, collection of low density polyethylene films used in agriculture and industrial packaging pre washing grinding washing separating drying and melt filtering or regranulating and processing it into refuse bags the next can be collection and sorting of pet bottles which are used for drinks packaging grinding washing separating drying and processing them into polyester fiber sheets or containers so the first recycling in mechanical recycling is primary recycling so this is sort of a closed loop perfect form of recycling it converts plastic materials from solid to liquid state and reconstitute them as finished components plastics transform without sacrificing their distinctive properties scrap parts can be ground and re extruded with minimal degradation so i am talking giving an example of injection molding the same can be done with extrusion as well and it uses less energy and fewer resources again because we are substituting virgin material uh, the most popular method uh, it is the most popular method wherever possible which is employed for recycling so, however if the quality is not very good you can always go for secondary recycling so it is known as downgrading so recovers plastic waste that is psw plastic solid waste for reuse in the manufacturing plastic products via mechanical means it is reprocessing of the used plastic to form new similar kind of products however it can be only done a few times before the polymers eventually break down and the quality of the plastic degrade so there are a number of cycles that you can have simple approach of waste plastic conversion can be there to uh, so plastic waste can be converted into grocery bags there can be pipes gutters can be made it's not a very solidly performing part just to take out water maybe from a roofing or maybe uh, supplying water to a particular place there can be window panes as well so these are some of the applications the third process which is uh, feed stock or chemical recycling is uh, referred to as uh, tertiary recycling technique it is often referred to as tertiary recycling advanced technology processes which convert plastic materials into small molecules which are suitable for use as a feed stock for the production of new petrochemicals and plastics products of chemical recycling have proven useful to be as a fuel as well and there are various processes that can be used uh, so the methods that can be employed is the first one is depolymerization so there can be thermal or other chemical methods that can be utilized uh, then there can be the second method which is partial oxidation 
and there can be cracking that can be done so there can be thermal catalytic or hydro cracking that you can do next method is partial oxidation so the direct combustion of polymeric waste which has good calorific value may be detrimental to the environment because of the production of noxious substances such as lighter hydrocarbons uh, noxs soxs or sulfur oxides and dioxins right so what do you do if you burn it what you will see is because you have the presence of oxygen and you are burning it there are going to be these uh, nitrous oxides sulfur oxides dioxins even furans and lighter hydrocarbons as well which are very volatile escaping into into the environment thereby polluting the environment so what you can do is you can go for partial oxidation where using oxygen and or steam as an agent to induce breakdown into the polymer chains and generate a mixture of hydrocarbons and syn gas that is synthesis gas which is you can see it is coming out of the bottom which is carbon monoxide plus hydrogen the quantity and quality being dependent on what kind of mixture of polymer we have right so you can see natural gas and oxygen along with the polymer mixture that you have in a reactor will give you syn gas upon its conversion so this is partial oxidation next is catalytic cracking so in this method a suitable catalyst is used to carry out the cracking reaction that lowers the reaction temperature and time so reaction temperature and time is going to get lowered by using a catalyst which is a chemical which is going to accelerate the process or catalyze the process is the right word so catalytic degradation yields a narrower product distribution so carbon numbers would be much nearer or carbon atom number with a peak of lighter hydrocarbons and occurs at considerably lower temperature so temperature range requirement is not high and this method seem to be the most promising to be developed into a cost effective commercial polymer recycling process to solve the acute environmental problem of plastic waste disposal although this is written but you will still find because it's a chemical based process economy half scale has to meet with a lot of things primarily when we are talk about catalytic cracking catalyst is very very costly although it is used in trace amount but you would find that again you have to give temperature there has to be a reactor presence that is required so you have to really look at the economy of scale the next process in the same feedstock recovery is pyrolysis so pyrolysis is generally defined as the controlled burning or heating of a material in the absence of oxygen in pyrolysis plastic pyrolysis the macromolecular structures of the polymer are broken down into smaller molecules or oligomers and sometimes monomeric units and the further degradation of these subsequent molecules depend on a number of different conditions including temperature right then what is the residence time again more residence time may uh, result in lowering the quality of the material or the oil that you are getting out of it uh, catalyst is going to convert and uh, you know presence of catalyst is going to give you better conversion rates the pyrolysis reaction can be carried out with or without the presence of catalyst and accordingly the reaction will be thermal uh, pyrolysis or catalytic pyrolysis now the last methodology of thermal recycling or incineration so if you can't do primary you can't go for secondary you can't go for tertiary then you would obviously go for thermal recycling or incineration which is quaternary recycling so it is often referred to as quaternary recycling it is burning of the waste to produce energy in the form of heat steam and electricity plastic materials possess a very high calorific value when they are burned since the heating value of plastics is high they make a convenient energy source so very sensible way of waste treatment when material recovery a process is fail due to economic constraints and producing water and carbon dioxide upon composition make them similar to other petroleum based fuels and greenhouse gas emissions such as polychlorinated dibenzo dioxins and pcd that is pcdd and pcd occurs biological recycling right so biological recycling is possible for bioplastics the specific way of biodegradation uh, has to be there wherein uh, of course different standards will say different things so it has to have uh, there has to be 60% loss of properties in a period of 45 days in fungi bacteria and algae now although biological recycling or bioplastics are good but then there is a slight drawback to it as well and the drawback is that uh it liberates out methane which is a greenhouse gas and it's a potentially it's a very harmful greenhouse gas so um 
this anaerobic digestion which by which this decomposition is basically going to happen and degradable and non degradable waste have to be properly sorted now the last thing in this part of this lecture is uh, landfilling however disposing of the waste to a landfill is becoming undesirable due to legislative pressures where waste to landfill has to be reduced there are rising cost of dumping right next is the generation of explosive greenhouse gases right and the poor biodegradability of commonly used packaging polymers uh, next is formal engineering preparation so design should be developed uh, to from local geological and hydrogeological uh, investigations say for example if there is a sort of a mountain kind of a area it is never wise to make sanitary landfill site at the bottom of the mountain right because water is going to trickle from the top and it is always going to get collected in that pocket right so uh, there has to be local hydrogeological and geological inputs that have you have to take and a waste disposal plan and a final restoration plan should also be developed next is permanent control so train staff should be based at the landfill to supervise site preparation and construction the depositing of waste and the regular operation and maintenance there have to be proper metrics that you have to put in to control the plant and to monitor it so there has to be monitoring of air quality water quality and the landfill gas quality as well ph and temperature of the site has to be monitored right and the leachate quality has to be monitored as well and the air quality has to be continuously monitored that it is not creating any harm to the environment last is plant waste emplacement and covering so it a waste should always be placed in layers and you have to compact it right so uh, put it in layers and then you uh, try and give a compaction to it so that waste will always be sort of fluffy in nature right so compaction is important small working area which is covered daily helps makes the waste less accessible to pest and vermin so if you keep on covering waste comes and gets dumped if you keep on covering and making small small pockets of waste will find no dogs or rodents will go and you know sort of feed on there and then go somewhere and uh, sort of spread the diseases so this is very important 